He said, pray as you see, as you see me pray. Other these words that you hear me say, based on the Suja, worship him, just follow him. Assalamu alaikum. As you see, new class you coming see, to you. Every Monday and Wednesdays, taught by Ustad Layla Nashiba, the faith of prayer. Every Monday and Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Inshallah, we'll see you there. Streaming on all major platforms, channel Sunnah followers. Welcome to our series on the prayer. Uh, our series on how to pray from A to Z. Uh, and for this class, we have already covered, I did it backwards this time. Most people, when they start off with purification, but I didn't because I had a lot, I had about 20 new shahadas thanks to the Reddit group I have. Uh, um, I have a channel on Reddit. And by the way, guys, for those of you who have not joined us on Reddit, we have a Sunnah followers. It's called Protectors of Sunnah. Protectors of Sunnah. Uh, please try to join our little Reddit channel. I only have five subscribers. But the alhamdulillah, the good thing is that the other people on Reddit know that I'm there and they know who I am and that I teach Islam uh, here in America in English, which is what the new shahadas are looking for because they get all twisted with the Arabic. So they've been referring people to my um, uh, streams. So please, guys, uh, uh, you know, join us on Reddit. We're also streaming live and simultaneously, and join us on all our platforms on on X, formerly known as Twitter. We're also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Join our Facebook page so you can stay up to date on the classes and announcements and things. And we are also streaming uh, on uh, Telegram. My channel on Telegram is Sooner Followers. Facebook is Sooner Followers. Uh, we're also on Twitch. We have a lot of followers on Twitch and Rumbo. I have a lot of followers on Rumbo now, too. And again, just look for the channel uh, Sooner Followers, as it says here on the thing here. That's that little picture with the little finger pointing. Sooner Followers on all the different platforms. You can find us. Uh, just the name, type the name Sooner Followers, and we'll pop up. So uh, we've been, uh, for the new Shahadas, I went over the prayer with them. And uh, uh, we talked about the pillars of the prayer. We talked about the sunnahs of the prayer, uh, what you should say. And let me just ask that again. What should you say as you're learning the Fatiha? You're learning the Tashahud. Oh, okay, hold on for a second. As you're learning the uh, Fatiha, And you are learning the Tashahud. Uh, inshallah, what should you say, guys, as you are learning these things? I um, mean, you know, uh, should you read from a paper or what should you do? Anyone? Anyone? If you don't know the Fatiha, you don't know the Tashahud, what should you uh, say or, until you learn them? Or should you just read it in English from a paper? What do you guys think? He says, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Akbar, La ilaha illallah, until you learn um, Al Fatiha. Exactly. And, and also, is that the same response that we give? Um, to the people who are for, for all the other positions of the prayer too. Is that the same response? Until you learn how to say the, uh, the other stuff, is it the same thing? Yes, it's the same response. Okay, good. And also, what about this question too? Um, I'm just trying to come up with questions. I see that you guys have sent me in your, um, these, uh, this whatever this is group. What about this? Um, trying to understand this question. 
What about this? Okay, I think I know what you're asking. Can I make my supplications in English? That's the question they always ask. So that must be what you're asking. Can the supplications be in English? What do y'all think? Yes, your personal supplications can be in any language. And this is something that uh, the, the sister here is typing to me. Um, the sister here, the new Shahada, Amy. Is that Amy? Can you hear me? Because I can't type. My, I got, yeah. Okay, you're listening? Okay, Amy is saying that a lot of people tell her. Um, that she can't make, uh, that she can't, has to use Arabic uh, when she's praying. So I'm going to, is it okay if I share your comment with everyone, Amy? Because, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of other new shahadas that feel the same way. Let me get your permission first. Let me wait, wait for her to respond first. Okay. Okay. This is a message that Amy sent me today, guys. She said that, you know, she's a new Shahada. Amy's been Muslim, what, for about several weeks? And uh, she's been coming here to the classes to learn uh, from me how to pray and all of that. And she said that one of the um, people in her at the mosque told her that uh, she can't, uh, her prayers has to be in Arabic. Um, since she doesn't know the Fatiha, she can read it off a of paper and she can't make dua in English. Her dua, Allah doesn't accept any duas or supplications unless they're in Arabic. And this is the thing I told you guys, you're going to come upon a lot of people here in America that's going to tell you that garbage. Okay. And that's why I'm teaching this class. And that's why I'm giving you guys all the hadiths. I use the PowerPoint. And that's why I tell you guys to take screenshots because this is not true. First of all, you should not read anything from a piece of paper when you're making salat because you're kushua. We're going to talk about kushua. Okay, that's your concentration. Your concentration is supposed to be on a law, you have to imagine that you are standing in the presence of this entity that's so great. And this is a conversation. Your prayers is a meeting with the law. This is your meeting with the law. Okay. It could be your last meeting and you should be focused on him. So we don't read from papers. How can you focus on your Lord if you're reading from papers? And like I told you guys, I gave you the authentic hadith. What was the source? Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when a companion approached him, he said, O Prophet of Allah, I just converted to Islam. I have a hard time uh, saying my prayers. The Prophet said, simply say, Subhana Allah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, in every position until you learn the Fatiha and stuff. Because as the prophet said, it's easy on the tongue, meaning no matter what language you speak. So, sisters, forget what they're telling you. These people don't understand the hadiths. I keep telling y'all, until we learn the hadiths, we don't know nothing. Okay? So, ignore that. Until you learn the Fatiha, you're going to say, Allahu Akbar, Subhana Allah, Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Subhana Allah, Alhamdulillah, just like that. In all your positions, the same with the Tashahu. Now, as I told you last week, Amy, are you following me? Okay, okay. Then, as you learn the Fatiha, say, for example, you learned the first verse, okay? So, you're going to open your prayer. The prayer opens with the first takbir, Allahu Akbar, okay? Hands, okay? This is a sunan too. The hand part is a sunan. So what am I going to say? 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Deen Subhana Allah Alhamdulillah La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar You see how I'm doing that? As you learn the Fatiha You recite whatever it is you're learning And then the rest Subhana Allah Alhamdulillah La ilaha illallah. That's what the prophet said. What's the source? Bukhari and Muslim and Muatta. And I think it was Dawood too, wasn't it? So these people, if they're telling you things and they're not giving you no hadith to go with it, no verse of the Quran, and it has to be clear nas, clear verse, ignore them because they're going to have you not wanting to pray. Okay, and that's what Amy's typing here. She said this is why she doesn't want to pray. A stock for law. Now do y'all see what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant when he said, don't make the people hate the prayer because you make the, the prayer hard on the people. Okay, so just disregard everything they've told you, Amy. Okay, take, take screenshots of my lecture, of my uh, PowerPoints, and refer them to me. Give them my phone number. Tell them to call Sister Layla Nashiba. Mm -hmm. Because they're, you know, this is not the filling. Prayer, this is, the prayer is sacred. You've only been Muslim for a month and they got you hating to pray because they're telling you that you can't talk to your Lord. Let's address the second part. Who said that? Who said that you cannot make personal supplication in whatever language you speak? Again, whenever we say that we cannot do something, if I'm going to tell you that you cannot do this, I have to bring clear nas, clear evidence, clear verses that say that. Allah is the creator of language, not man. Allah can understand the ant. The ant didn't speak Arabic when it asked Allah, oh Allah, protect uh, us from being trampled on by Solomon. The ant spoke ant language. When Jonah, alayhi salam, was in the belly of the whale, he was making dua. And also the fish in the sea were making do it with him. They were speaking in, in whale fish, goldfish, dolphin. Okay? So don't let these people turn you off. Allah did not make a mistake creating us in different races, different languages, different nations, okay? So if, they, if you go to the mosque and they're putting that much pressure on you, then don't go. Because guess what? You're a Muslim woman. A woman gets more blessings at home anyway. Okay? Just come to my classes every day. Yes, the same with the Tashahu. Okay, I'm in that position. Jauza, the sitting position. Why do we raise the finger? By the way, why do we raise the finger? Who can answer that question? What is the finger raised for? And do I have to raise the finger? No, you don't have to. It's, it's a sunnah, but if you do it, it prevents shaitan from interrupting your prayer. Exactly. The sunnah actions are done to uh, strengthen our kushur, our concentration. Okay? I don't have to raise my finger, but the prophet did it in several different ways as we went over last week. Okay? But let's say you're sitting and you're doing your tashahu. You learned the first two verses. Atayatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat. As-salam alayna. Allahu Akbar. No, subhana Allah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Same thing. You see that? Atayatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat. Subhana Allah. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, and put your head down. You get it? That's all. As you're learning the Tashahu, as you're learning the Fatiha, you just recite what you learned and then, subhana Allah, alhamdulillah, 
La ilaha illallah. That's what our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. Is it clear? Yeah, and like I said, if they're confusing you and they're making you hate to pray, you know, telling you that you can't talk to Allah, how are you going to talk to him? If you have to speak Arabic, then how is anybody going to talk to Allah? Everybody doesn't speak Arabic. To be honest, even the Arabs don't speak it. They speak slang now. Okay? How can anyone talk to Allah? So we just don't talk. I mean, come on. Yeah, just stay away from those type of people that's making the deen hard for you. Because I don't want you to end up hating this religion and apostating. And by the way, guys, this is a problem. We have a high apostasy rate. Now do you guys see why we have such a high apostasy rate here in America? And uh, today we're going to continue. We're going to continue uh, with um, uh, the prayer, but we're going to go into the purification. And this is great for the new Shahadas too. Let me put this up here because um, let me get myself a uh, moderator status. Hold on. I can't work my other computer. Okay, can you guys see? Okay, all right. This is something also for the new Shahadas. Pay attention. Also the old Muslims. We're going to go over the actions that... Hold on actions that correspond to the nature of mankind okay this is going to be new for a lot of you new shahadas too and i make should make sure you guys take screenshots okay allah has chosen certain actions for all of us that his prophets alayhi salam and their followers used to do too that distinguish us from the other people okay and also these actions are known as you know the actions of the fitra remember we talked about the fitra the fitra of the heart how all of us were born upon uh the fitra well, these are actions uh, that correspond to the nature of mankind because fitra is also an Arabic term that refers to the nature of mankind. And one of them is circumcision. I want all you young brothers to pay attention if some of you have not been circumcised. You need to get circumcised, okay? This prevents dirt from going into your private parts and makes it easy to keep it clean. And so for women, women do not, I repeat, women do not, I repeat, women do not have to be circumcised. Where is my Dalil? Well, we have this authentic hadith from Sahih Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was approached by a companion who asked him about circumcising a woman. The Prophet said, if you do it, if you do it, just take the tip, just take a little bit the tip he said if you do it okay but for the men you need to definitely be circumcised prophet ibrahim alayhi salam he circumcised himself when he was 80 years old and by the way circumcision doesn't hurt i heard yeah we had a brother here at our website new convert last year he got circumcised he said, Layla, we didn't even, I didn't even feel it. They, they numb you and all that, put you sleep, numb you, you wake up, you don't feel it. Okay, so if you haven't been circumcised, brothers, get circumcised. That's from the fitra. And also shaving the pubic hairs. The pubic hairs are the hairs on your private parts, the hairs underneath your underarms, not the legs. If you want to shave your legs, you can, but the legs are not considered pubic. Pubic considers is considered the underarms and your private areas, okay? And by the way, you can shave it completely 
or you can trim it or pull it out. It still will suffice. Okay. Also clipping the fingernails and trimming the mustache. We have the Hadith of Ibn Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. He said the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, be different from the polytheists. Let your beards grow and shave your mustache. And I'm putting all the sources there. Also, we have the Hadith of Abu Huraira, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, five things are part of the fitra, shaving the pubic hair, circumcision, trimming the, the, the mustache, and removing the hair under your arms and trimming your nails. Okay? Don't let your mustache grow so long that it gets food and stuff on it, like some of those non-Muslims do, you know? Because again, cleanliness is part of godliness and Islam emphasizes cleanliness, okay? So a lot of people ask, how often do I have to do that? Well, you should do it as often as you can because it's all part of cleanliness, but it don't go more, don't go longer than uh, um, um, uh, uh, 40 days, okay? Don't go too long without doing it. In fact, we have this hadith from Anas. He said, the time period for us to trim the mustache and cut the nails and pluck the armor high was 40 nights. 40 nights. So you don't want to go longer than 40 days or 40 nights. And these are the sources. Take a screenshot of all these hadiths. People don't learn the Hadith anymore. And when they hear people like me say things, they think I'm crazy. So that's why I always use PowerPoint. Okay. All right. As you Muslim brothers should know, it's haram for you brothers to shave your beard. And I know that's hard to understand because we have the progressive Muslims of America you know, these brothers are known for shaving and trimming their beards, okay? But you're not supposed to do that. That's not Islam. What about this, letting your beard grow and become thick? We have to understand that a beard is a, is a sign of dignity. That's what helps to distinguish a man from a woman. And by the way, brothers, women, we love beards. I don't know where you brothers get this misconception that it's a turn off to women. I don't know any woman who doesn't like a man with a beard. Okay. So it should not be cut short that it appears to be shaved, nor should it be left too long that it becomes untidy. So now that's when you can clean a beard up. Say, for example, you have one of those bushy untidy beards, then that's that. in that case, you may be allowed to trim or tidy it up. But these progressive Muslims that we see, uh, they don't have that problem. You know, they just cut their beards off or shave them or trim them just to be, to blend in with the kafir. Okay. So a long beard is a sign of manhood in Islam. Listen to what El Bukhari said. It's, it says, whenever Ibn Umar made the Hajj or Umrah, he would hold his beard in his fist, and whatever exceeded his fist, he would cut off because his beard was. This is how deep you brothers will you will hear other men use. Why did Ibn Umar do that? Because his beard was real long. His beard came down past his chest, and his beard was bushy bushed. OK. But these brothers that are doing it don't have that type of beard. They're just trying to look like the American. American next top male model. And also hair. you guys have heard me tell you guys over and over again that dreadlocks and any type of lock is haram. It's haram. It's haram to wear locks, not braids. A braid and a dreadlock is not the same thing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever has hair should honor it. And how do we honor it? We honor it by combing through it and oiling it and taking care of it. 
We have this hadith where a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with unkept hair and an untidy beard. The Prophet pointed to him as if commanding him to straighten it up. And the man left and came back and his hair and beard was combed. And the Prophet said to him, isn't this better? Then you running around looking like a shaitan. By the way, guys, the jinn, there's another hadith. The jinn, they wear their hair in locks. There's an authentic hadith where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the jinn, they let their hair grow and not up, and they don't comb through it, and they don't oil it. And also Allah speaks in the Quran about the zakum tree. What is the zakum tree? The zakum tree is a tree that grows out of the, 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 uh, the, the bottom of hell. And the fruit of that tree is like the heads of devils. Shaitan. Okay. So dreadlocks, any type of lock is haram. A lot of you say culture. Anytime you're culture impedes upon Islamic culture. You have to let your culture go. Islam is about beauty. Allah loves beauty and Allah loves cleansiness. Allah hates ugliness and dirtiness. Dreadlocks are dirty. They're nasty. They're ugly. They stink. You guys know. Come on. I go to get my hair done every two weeks and there's always some woman in there with them nasty dreads and she has the whole shop stinking. And as they're trying to clean it, her scalp just peels off. It's filthy. It's nasty. It's dirty. Okay. That's not a slime. Also, another hadith. Abu Qatada, he had a lot of hair. And he said to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, I have a lot of hair. Should I comb it? He said, of course. And to honor it, take care of it. And so Abu Qatara tells us he used to oil it twice a day due to what the Prophet Wasallam said about honoring it. Okay? So take care of your hair. You have to be able to comb through it. Comb through it. You can comb through braids. Braids are fine, but not no lock. Okay? And also, you can cut your hair, women and men. However, if a woman is going to cut her hair, you have to make sure that you're not cutting your hair to resemble a man. You guys, what I'm talking about, those little stud cuts. Y'all know what the stud cut is, a little bitty afro. You're going to go natural so your hair ain't but this long. You look like a dude. You look like LGBTQ. We can't do that. You can't resemble a man. Aisha really Allah on her cut her hair when they slandered her because Aisha had a problem with anxiety like most of us do and her hair fell out. She lost a lot of weight. Okay. So she ended up cutting her hair to the length of her earlobe. Earlobe. But not to the point where she looked like a stud like a lot of you African American sisters are doing. Y'all got to cut that out. Y'all look bad. Okay, and for the men, you can cut it or you can let it grow long. We have this hadith, whereas Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, tells us that the prophet said, either shave it all or leave it all. And look at the sources. You see Sahih Muslims in there. To shave part of it and leave part of it, we don't do. We don't do, guys. We don't do that. This is what the Kafir do. Either shave it all or leave it all. Make it even. You can't have a shag. A shag. You can't have a fade. Okay, we don't do that. Okay, so you know these, so this is what we're learning about the hair. Take care of your hair. New shahadas, take care of your hair especially you sisters, you can go to get your hair done. Go to the beauty shop. You know, I go every two weeks. Who said you can't get your hair done? Allah loves beauty. A woman's hair is her crowning glory. Take care of it. Okay. 
And also you can dye your hair. They're going my favorite color. <laughs> By the way, guys, this is some good dye for you sisters. It's temporary dye. I use splat. <laughs> <laughs> I said I would advertise this. Hey, Latifah, you see this? This is what I use. Splat. Purple. Blue. Green. <laughs> and it washes out, guys. <laughs> Pink. They got magenta. Oh, yeah. I like the magenta, too. I had the magenta before. It's nice. Yeah, you had the magenta, too? Yeah, the magenta's cool. <laughs> so, yes, you can dye your hair. And you don't have to just use henna. Do y'all think that the companions, the Arabs only dyed their hair with henna? They used other things. They would use desert roses and everything and other things. Okay. And you can dye it any color except for black. But we're going to talk about that black in a minute. I'm going to give y'all some of these hadiths about this black. I'm going to answer the question. Why is it that we don't cup dye it black? Because it makes you look old. And I'm going to give y'all my dalil, okay? So just bear with me. Now, when it comes to gray, yes, it's encouraged in Islam that you dye your hair gray. Uh, I mean, you dye your hair if it's gray, okay? And this can be women and men, and you can use anything. We have the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you can dye your hair that's gray, but don't pluck it because the gray hair are a Muslim's light. Whenever we get a gray hair, that's a good deed written for you. And Allah will elevate you up a higher degree. Okay, and he will also take away one of your sins. Look at the source, authentic hadiths. Also, Anas tells us, we used to hate that a man would pluck his white hairs from his beard or head out because you're taking away your blessings, okay? Now, again, when you dye it, you can use anything. You can dye it henna, you can use Lady Claire oil, you can use what I use, splat. I love splat, okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the Jews and Christians do not dye their hair, so be different from them. Do the opposite of them. And again, another companion tells us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best thing that one can use to change the color of gray is henna and katam, which was a reddish dye. They used all kind of stuff. Now we got Lady Claire all. Now we got splat. Now we got L'Oreal, okay? Now, what? If, why is it? A lot of people ask. I'm getting ready to give you all my evidence. I'm a person of Dalio. I don't speak without knowledge. Why is it that we don't use black? Because black makes you look old. Black makes you look old. And yes, the companion said it. Let me give y'all my evidence. Ibn Hajar. Ibn Hajar speaks about it in his book called Faith Athbari. He says that Azuhir, I mean, no, Azuhri said, we used to abuse black to dye our hair if, we, if our faces were young and youthful. But if we had wrinkles and our teeth were gone, we would never dye our hair black. See, there's my Dalio. There's my Dalio. <laughs> I tell y'all, black makes you look older. Also, Jabir, he talks about how when Abu, Fa Abu Bakr's father uh, converted to Islam after the conquest of Mecca, and uh, Abu Bakr introduced the prophet to his father. His father had white hair, white beard. He looked really old. And that's when the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, dye his hair. He told him, uh, take him to his wives and let, let his wife change the color of his hair with anything but avoid black. Why? Because as Azuri said, it makes you look older. This is in Faith Abahi, Ibn Hajar. 
I tell y'all, when I be telling y'all things, I got some Dalil, okay? All right, so you can dye your hair any color but black. Black's going to make you look older. Okay, also, it's preferred to use perfume for the brothers. When you brothers leave the home, it's in, uh, highly recommended that you brothers put some musk or perfume on you, not the women. The women cannot put on perfume and go outside the house because any man who smells us, it's as if we have committed adultery with them. So we don't wear the perfume out the house around men. But for the men, you know, they can put on perfume because it's pleasing to the soul and it beautifies the atmosphere. Listen to what Anas said at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, among the things of this world, I love women and perfume and the coolness of my eyes is the prayer. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if someone offers you perfume, do not reject it because it's easy to carry and it has a beautiful scent. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam liked musk. He said, it's the best of smells. Okay. Ibn Umar used to burn and inhale a branch called Alua. And, and he's, it had a beautiful smell. He also liked camphor. He used to say, this is the way the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inhaled sense. Okay, so take screenshots. Screenshots of this. Okay, are there any questions? <laughs> 